beep, 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 beep. Evening all, afternoon all, morning, wherever the hell you are. Right, okay, so welcome to Court of the Media Jester. Uh, please subscribe to my Substack um, if you can and help me keep going. As a sort of companion piece to the earlier video that I did, we have a, a tremendous piece here from Judy Bindle, a long-time feminist um, activist and also supporter of women's rights. Um, <clears throat> a warrior, a warrior for women's rights without a shadow of a doubt. Writing here in Al Jazeera, another interesting piece, a companion, if you will, for the earlier one. Sex work advocacy in California is harming children. You will have to read and reread this to get your head around it, because I had to. It's unbelievable. So, Judy writes, In recent decades, so-called sex workers' rights campaigners working to decriminalise pimping and buying of sex have attached themselves, just like trans rights activists, to the movement for the rights of same-sex attracted people. This was a logical and highly beneficial, beneficial move on their part. Again, see what we're seeing here is the forced teaming of the TQ plus with the LGB. This, is, this highlights this and why it's a problem in a tremendous way. Being seen as part of a proud, widely respected social justice campaign undoubtedly helps their efforts to perpetuate the myth that sex work is work and prostitution is liberating. Their acceptance into what became what came to be called the LGBTQ plus movement, however, has been incredibly harmful to the most vulnerable members of society and especially children. You'll remember from this morning's piece by Janice in which we discussed the idea of what will happen is if you set up a sacred caste or if you elevate some people, what happens is you then get the infiltration by child abusers. And this situation is no different. The movement, whatever the movement may be, in this case, the movement to paint prostitution as something positive has been infiltrated once more. Recently in California, for example, the so-called LGBTQ plus activists have successfully mounted opposition to planned increased penalties for adults soliciting sex from prostituted children. Do you want to hear it again? So-called LGBTQ activists have successfully mounted opposition to planned increased penalties for adults soliciting sex from prostituted children. In April this year, Republican Senator Shannon Grove put forward a bill that would have made soliciting a minor for sex or agreeing to engage in any form of commercial sex with a child a felony offence, carrying a mandatory jail time and a requirement for sex offender registration for repeat offenders. I think paying a child for sex is something you should be absolutely punished for. Strange idea that they think you shouldn't. The crime of purchasing a child of any age for sex in the state of California should be a prison felony, said Grove. However... Look up at Q-plus activists opposed the bill, citing concerns about unintended consequences. They claimed that increased penalties for those who abuse minors caught up in the sex trade will affect the look up at Q-plus community disproportionately. We are particularly concerned that the harsher, pe harsher penalties proposed in this bill would disproportionately impact marginalised communities. Who do we think they're talking about? Who do we think they're talking about? This marginalised community who already suffer from systemic, systematic biases within the criminal justice system, particularly when it comes to sexually based offences. Uh, argued Grover's opponents while addressing the Public Safety Committee about the changes they want to see in the proposed bill. You might think that harsh, harsh penalties for buying and selling children for sex should be a no-brainer. But this art activist, these activists argued that studies have shown that look up at Q plus people, particularly gay and transgender individuals, are more likely to be charged with sex offences compared to their heterosexual counterparts. When are gay men going to realise what lesbians realised a long time ago? The TQ plus needs to go, right? Judith Butler, right, the godmother of queer theory, said in an interview with Owen Jones in 2021 that queer is all about breaking the boundaries between adult and child. On every level, admittedly. But for God's sake, this is it. It's hiding in plain sight. If there's any gay man still calling themselves part of the Lugapati Q community, then they are absolutely crackers. These people are reprehensible. They then went on to state, this is the people who are opposing the, the felony, that LGBTQ, Lugapati Q plus individuals are nine times more likely to be charged with sex crimes and are thus more likely to be incarcerated. That might be the case, right? I don't care. And nor does Julie. Frankly, it says, which would in turn lead to increased difficulties in finding housing and employment. Frankly, who cares, says Julie. 
Why on earth should an exception be made for plus identified abusers? Do children suffer less when they're used and abused by someone who claims to be a victim of discrimination themselves for whatever reason? Here's the priestly class again. And it warrants saying again, we do not set up priestly classes. Nobody is beyond safeguarding. Nobody is beyond being treated fairly by the law because they think that that law is, is, being, is being used against them. Well, don't abuse a child. The TQ plus has a go, has to go. It's got to go. In the end, the Public Safety Committee made several amendments to Grove's bill to please these activists that significantly weakened it. The amended bill allows for soliciting children aged 16 to 17 to be punished as a family only when it can be proved that the minor in question was a victim of sex trafficking and gives the judge's discretion to charge those accused of soliciting children under 15 of 15 and under, either with a misdemeanour or a felony, depending on circumstances. Further, under the amended bill, a felony conviction for soliciting children carries possible, not mandatory, jail time. Requirement for sex offender registration for repeat offenders is also optional. It's just be on the bail. The bill needs to go through several more hurdles before it is enacted. Many fear it will be further watered down and deemed completely useless by the time, if ever, it becomes law. It's just beyond the pale. Absolutely beyond the pale. Wherever wherever there is a group that is that is given a leg up, right? And this is about equity. Don't think it's not, because it is. They're thinking, well, because they were oppressed in the past, in order to flatten out the outcomes of people's lives, we have to make sure that they're not oppressed in the future. Wherever you do that, and it's... I don't want that, right? Gay men were persecuted most of my life, and, and you... The young people today have no idea what the persecution was like. Absolutely none of what the persecution was like throughout my life. Do I want some kind of retribution? Do I want, you know, payment? No. What do I want? I want us to be treated like everybody else. That's what I want. I want to be able to walk down the street with, you know, with my partner, hand in hand. I, I want to be able to walk... I haven't got one, but you know what I mean. I want to be able to walk down the street and do that. I want to be able to get married. I well, I don't really. I want to be able to have a partnership. I want to be treated equally before the law. I want to be treated in a way that means that I'm part of society. What I don't want is to be put on a pedestal. And I'm telling you now, the Q Plus cult, which is what it is at this point, has got nothing to do with gays and lesbians. And it's time that gays woke up and saw this. It's time that gays woke up and saw this because these people will hide in plain sight. This is pie all over again. And we're falling for it. We're falling for it. This is about equity. They're trying to flatten what happened in the past to make sure that everybody has equal oppression points on their intersectional ladder. That's what this is about. Grievance mining, critical social justice. This is what it's all about. If people don't see the link between it all yet, I don't understand you. Warrior teachers see it. They can see it, you know, just by going, oh, here we go again. They can see it. They can see how this lot intersects and how it is that these people are allowed to infiltrate organisations and take them over, which is what they do. Because wherever there is the opportunity to abuse a child and do it with impunity, they will be there. They will be there. Judy highlights here the problem of having to deal with a situation whereby the legalisation of prostitution as sex work is work then spills over and goes beyond that and becomes something that makes being a child dangerous because there is a safeguarding failure. The gay men need to wake up and smell the coffee. These people are in our midst and they're in our midst because of the TQ+. Plus. That's why they're there. It's that simple. Go ask Judith Butler. She said it, 2021. The point of queer theory is to break down the barriers between adult and child. Now go and think on that. And then think on why in California, the legislative team for the opposite side that Judy supports are saying that you can't do that because it would disproportionately affect the LGBTQ. It won't disproportionately affect the LGB because any LGB person worth their soul isn't doing what the TQ plus are doing. This is the TQ plus that are the problem. And it's time that gay men woke up and bloody well understood that. I'm sick of the law, yeah. Put yourselves together, you bastards. I'll see you later. Ta-da!